All right, we got a new camera today on site, so I'm pretty excited. Hey, Greg, say hi to the new camera. That's, that's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, huh? No, not your paycheck. Basically, I just found out my steel is not gonna be here until tomorrow, but what that means is we've got the opportunity to get all the lumber off the ground, all the trusses done, braced up, everything level, like perfect, right? So when that steel drops tomorrow on Friday, we will reach our goal of getting the entire roof done by the end of the day three. Uh, and that puts us on track to make sure that next week we can wrap this thing up. I just got trusses and posts ordered for my next job, which means we got a schedule. Let's get the first truss up on the end. We're gonna load up this uh, second truss. We will basically get the first three trusses, the first two full intermediates and also the first end truss. And that will complete our first full bay loading up purlins and I gotta say first time doesn't happen very often but I picked that pile perfectly that's perfect Greg perfect that doesn't happen every time where do you want them at center first set of trusses are now up and that's always our first thing we want to do is we want to get our first bay up and once that first bay is up we'll get it locked down purlins done uh, I think this lift might be a little bit big for this job site however I'm also afraid of my MRT 260 making it around this building they've got some really bad grade issues and I'm gonna have to probably do a little bit of excavating myself the rest of our trusses to the inside because once we finish this wall we'll have to set the rest of them from the inside so the job now is I'm gonna make up these two jam posts get this header built we'll finish all the wall framing over to this corner and then at that point we'll go ahead and get the last two bays it's amazing only three bays of trusses on this building sure is quick now that I have my trusses on the inside of the building, I can go ahead and build this 10 by 10 garage door. And almost all of our sidewall garage doors are gonna have a two by 12 or some header material on the outside. And then we're gonna come on the inside and use two two by 12s, mainly just for the door bracketry and everything. Uh, what I'm doing there is I'm using a spacer board that's going to give me the exact 10 foot dimension of the door. And now I'm making up what we call a stub column. And these are just to basically transfer the truss down into that header and spread it across to my post. Got the jumbo nailer, gonna nail it off, cut everything where it needs to be and we're good to go. As long as you have spent the time to mark and measure and cut everything accurately, every piece of the puzzle should go together just like that perfect no thinking no recutting uh, everything should just fall into place and you know if it's not where it should be then you got to move it and make it right because we've spent the time up front to do all those cuts you can see how tricky it is to get those trusses up just perfect and actually you'll notice here I actually hit the truss with my boom as I'm backing up no big deal no harm no foul we get them all up and we're on to the next thing. 
Got one more bay of trusses to put up. We'll get these purlins on after lunch. Got the rest of the walls up. Feeling pretty good. I think we'll have a good shot at getting our trusses up, purlins up, overhangs. Got started out here on these overhang tails. Get these garage doors blocked. There's a lot to do, Greg. I suppose it's only day two, there's a lot to do. Now it's on to our overhang tails. You can see I just measured it 24 inches off the face of my column. That is going to give me a two foot overhang when I put my sub fascia on. And all we're doing is nailing those two by four tails on, just like a purlin, using a 60 penny nail. Running up the end fascia, we're just going to use a 2x6 and screw it into the face of every purlin. And if we're done our job right, it should be straight.